I used some floor. I'm sorry. I don't think that my audio is on. It should be on now. Hi, um, it's Katja, the Audi artist. And this is my first solo artist show. Um, and I, that wall right there with the fluorescent paint, um, our, um, autistic content creators, um, primarily on YouTube. There's one that's just on Instagram. Um, there's some of my art over there. Um, those paintings over there are primarily on the other wall behind me are of my journey. Um, as I was learning, I was autistic and processing memories and things. Um, those pieces, that one I did um, during COVID actually, I was sick and all I could do was lay down. Then I have, uh, there's some prints. Um, and each of these is, you know, me processing my autism journey. I'm sorry if you hear popping, that's me playing with putty right now because I'm kind of nervous talking over this and hoping that it actually is working. <laughs> um, yeah, these are all like memories. Um, some of them from childhood. There's my high school bedroom where I grew up. Um, that's me getting my first, uh, visit at a neuro person. I don't know. I was, I was under 10. Um, you know, uh, what it's like having conflict when you're autistic. Uh, my neighborhood. There's autistic after 40. There's some of my neuro spicy pendants that I handmade, hand painted and resined over. Um, one of them's gone because it got sold. There's all my holographic stickers that I did of all of the paintings, which are really cool. Um, yeah, it was pretty cool to install all of this. Um, I'm still working on my ride or die, um, autism creature or TBH, uh, to be honest, Creature, the Ride and Die Motorcycle um, t-shirt, but I do have some holographic stickers now that aren't, aren't there yet because I haven't been there yet. Hi, Catherine. Can you hear me? I hope so because I've been talking for a few minutes. <laughs> um, I think... I thought I turned the audio off of this, but I was in there by myself. Um, so if you hear noise from the video, it's just, you know, me walking around the room. Um, that's of herbs and of herbs and altars. Again, all of the paintings I did. Um, that's like just the community room. Just trying to show like the effects. That one was like when I got fired. Um, those are all like relating to medical conditions that I have. So I have my, my neuro spicy brain and my heart and other stuff. I guess that's the end of it. So it was like five minutes long, but I just wanted to show um, some of the work. Sorry, I'm knocking stuff over now. Let's see if I can switch the video to me. Um, do, 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 do. Hello. <laughs> Move the camera. I'll give you some more light. Oh, there we go. Hello. Um, yeah, so that was, um, it's going to be up for like till the end of next month. So, um, I just, you know, like wanted to do some pain. I mean, I, I actually went through autistic burnout, um, 
really bad, which really pushed me to really feeling the need to have a diagnosis because I did not know what was going on with me. I, I like lost my speech and I, I um, lost my ability to do art. I really thought I wasn't going to be able to paint anymore um, at all. Um, so I started off doing um, little paintings of um, of myself as I was like filling out paperwork and you know kind of like going over the criteria and I was doing little um, trying to make sure I got a binder put together for, you know, when I have my evaluation, which is actually next week. My first, um, evaluation is on the 18th. Um, and I have like two binders that are like that thick, um, full of stuff. Um, actually, um, Thomas Henley was kind enough to, um, do a review of, um, my last video, because I was having extreme anxiety after I put up my, um, exhibition. I was like, okay, now what do I do? I don't have anything to do. Um, and I, all of a sudden, like right after I put that up, I found out that I had my assessment coming up and I was like, oh, cause they finally scheduled it after I've been waiting for years. And, um, all of a sudden I was like, uh, what if they don't cover it on my insurance for the testing? What if, the, what if, you know, they misdiagnose me again? What if, what if, what if, what if? And I don't know. I just had so much anxiety. Like I didn't know what to do with myself. And I keep trying to picture myself where, like, what am I going to look like? Hi, Isabella. Um, like, what am I going to look like? What am I going to be like? What should I dress like? Should I dress down? Should I just go in my pajamas? Should I put makeup on or not put makeup on like is any of that gonna matter like I don't want to like go like I'm going for a job interview because honestly I do wear makeup sometimes I used to wear makeup every day but since I've gone through burnout and everything it's like I sometimes will have the energy to do it like today I didn't even put any on but something I did do today was trim my dead ends by myself. Yes, I just did. And I kind of like how I'm growing my bangs out, got myself some little layers in here. Um, yeah, so that's better because it doesn't feel like, you know, scratchy on me or like feel like it's dying or um, frizzing out everywhere and breaking off. Um, so that's a good thing. And I redid my hair here and and down here i think i'm getting better at this actually um i'm sorry the uh <laughs> the footage was not as uh cool as i thought it was gonna be but um i guess i didn't include the footage i, I zoomed in on each image with the labels and i guess that somehow didn't make it into the da vinci program i've been using um and I could not for the life of me figure out how to add audio to it. So I just decided I'll just run the video on here after it took me literally days to figure out how to even export it and then import it and do all this crazy stuff. But I figured it out. <laughs> but I just wanted to like do what I said I was going to do, which was share the footage. Um, and I, I don't even know if anyone like was anticipating it or not. Um, but I felt like I said, I'm going to do this thing and then I didn't do it. And then I felt like I can't get on and do any other YouTube videos until I do that now. Um, it was causing me a lot of stress and I, I think it's just like sh stress. I create, I, I like just create it for myself. But some things that I have done um, is uh, that have kind of helped me. Uh, definitely the Thomas um, doing my video 
the other day and all of the beautiful feedback I received from the uh, online autistic community, like really, 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 really helped. Like I I'm feeling a lot better. I mean, I still have some anxiety over it. I did go back through the binders and I'm like, you know, they're going to get what they get. And then it's like, oh, I, I did like it, the idea of making a bullet point. Okay. Here's my bullet points though. Um, like it, I kind of like, and then just started like seriously. Okay. So I'm like, oh, this is just adding more stuff. And I, I don't know that I can summarize my life into bullet points. I don't know. I feel like I need help if I'm going to do something like that. And I'm just like, I did, I do have a section in the beginning where it's like the DSM five criteria. And I put little post-it notes for each thing. Like I put like, you know, section one, a, a, point one or whatever. I can't remember what, how it's like described in, in the DSM five off the top of my head, but I do know that I have the printout and I have a sticky note labeled and I'm giving examples for each thing. So I'm, and that's just one of the ways that I did it. I have like at least three, um, DSM five, like things with criteria. I started off with like index cards. So, um, I just literally started brain vomiting, like, um, like what, the, what is this? Let me tell you. It's, um, first of all, it was a to-do list. Take a shower. Oh, guess what? I did that. I did do that today. I took a shower. I trimmed my hair. Um, I researched how to do the color to make it, um, a pass more pastel color. I had a very dark green and they say, mix the dark, you know, mix the, um, mix it with con your favorite conditioner and then leave it on your hair. Like mix it till it's slightly darker than the color that you want your hair to be. And I did that. And Hey, look, because I was a dark green and it, it is not like that. So, um, I'm pretty impressed how that turned out. Um, it was great. Edit video slash post. Hey, we're doing it. Um, make bullet points for doctors. Hmm. I don't know if this qualifies, but Hey, um, oh, and I didn't sweep, but guess what? I don't have to sweep because someone else slept for me. Yay. Um, okay. So what I have on here is, um, now, I was taking some notes from some videos, um, and it was talking about like sensory and I thought it was interesting, the list of sensory stuff that that person was talking about, um, touch, taste and smell, sight, hearing, balance, um, body awareness, temperature, pain and self-harm, internal senses, and synesthesia? Synesthesia. Is that the one where you blend your senses? I don't know. I, I meant to look that up and I forgot to because I got skirked over here. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Um, so what I ended up doing was I was writing, I was, my mom, I, I mailed her some papers and her and my sister went over it and they did the best they can, but just, you know, for someone like me who has no records, um, I have no records of my childhood. I just, I don't know what happened to him, but... Like, I don't even think I have a baby book. I don't know where it is, but my mom, um, I don't think she ever put all my milestones in there. So, and she can't remember. Cause I mean, that was so long ago for her. Um, and also because, um, I, my mom became a single parent 
while she was pregnant with me. And so she had to go to work and put me in daycare at six weeks old. So she didn't get to see my milestones and like do that. And and she worked uh, like the graveyard shift or something. So uh, she worked, I don't remember, she said something shift. Um, so she did the best she could with the papers and just hopefully I'll get it by what, Thursday is when my appointment is. Um, so I just put some notes on here. I was kind of remembering some stuff as I was watching other videos. Um, for kindergarten, I didn't have any friends, but I liked Miss Curran um, because she was sweet. And um, I think she was a like a newer teacher, younger teacher. It seems like teachers that um, are like, in my experience, working as a teacher and being a student, like the younger ones that are new seem to be more optimistic and like more peppy and full of energy. And as like the years go on, it's like you either become uh, very efficient and I don't, I think it takes a really strong, a beautiful type of person to be able to maintain a positive, um, it's hard being a teacher. I'll just say that it's really, really hard. Okay. But, um, she was one of those, but I remember she did, uh, Kern's Care Bears for a field day. And I just remember having this tank top and, and, uh, we had a Care Bear on the front. I loved Care Bears. So, um, but I remember not having friends and we had like open concept at my elementary. Um, and so there was like, but for kindergarten, it was like this big, huge room with one of those, like, um, what are those things called that they kind of squish up and they can close like an accordion doors. And, um, so we would have like circle time where we learning the alphabet and doing stuff. And then, um, she would have us go like do stations where there was like different play sets and stuff in this other room. And in my mind, these rooms are gigantic, right? But all the kids would run over there and try to be at the station first. And I would just like be like, Hmm don't want to be over there. It's really bright. It's really loud. All the kids are loud. I'm going to stay over here. Um, unless they like would force me to go over there, but, um, I, I would just try to not go over there. Um, and then when I was forced to interact, I, I just, um, don't remember having a good time and having meltdowns. Um, but it's, it's just basically stuff like that. Uh, me remembering stuff like how school was for me growing up because these are the kinds of things that like my mom wouldn't know because you know she wasn't at the school but um or things she wouldn't think of but basically like what it was like for me and what I went through um but I figured and I went all the way through high school so and, and it's, you know, I think that's pretty condensed, don't you? For, well, okay, maybe plus that page. But yeah. <laughs> so anyway, the other thing I've been up to, anybody out there doll fans? Anybody like, that's one of my special interests um, other than art and actually use the dolls. Um as models for my paintings in the past and, and have, um, even attempted to create by hand my own ball jointed dolls. Um, I've made puppets, um, and also, um, customizing dolls. I heard of at least one artist designing artwork based on how musical pieces look to her color wise. Hmm. For me, my artwork is like me processing my feelings because like I don't always know 
what I'm feeling. And I didn't really realize that I didn't know what I was feeling um, until I heard about um, alexithymia. And I heard about that, um, pretty sure the first time I heard about it was through Thomas Henley. Um, and, but because he said that, it helped me. It was very slow going. I mean, I went from like oil painting these like very, I, 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 like I'm an artist. I'm, I'm a master artist. I'm a master oil painter. Okay. Like whatever, but, um, whatever that means, like toot toot, but, um, I feel like I haven't even touched oil paint since I have moved to this new state. Um, and it's been like seven, eight months now. And it, it's only been in the last couple of months that even touched actual paint that wasn't a paint marker. I started back into painting with paint markers, like, cause I completely like, I'm like, oh, I, I was, I was like, who am I without art? Because that's important to me. Um, I've heard of people regressing and losing stuff and I was terrified of losing that. And I, and I, and I, and I see here, I actually found where I started to copy others. Um, versus me just being myself. Me being myself was not okay at school. Uh, me being myself at home was usually okay. Um, but at school, not so much. And I would get in trouble. I'd get in trouble because I would draw all over my clothes, you know, my worksheets. Um, I, I was wanting to move around a lot. I couldn't sit still. I couldn't pay attention. Everything was bright. I couldn't like every like tap of a pencil was just like echoing in my head. I would get migraines. They wouldn't believe me, you know, stuff like that. Um, and I was the pro they put me off to, to the side to sit by myself and like try to like, um, motivate me or reward me for doing work with coloring books and, um talk about a good education right so um yeah but i i remember going into so kindergarten through fourth grade was elementary school and then when i went into what they called intermediate which was just fifth and sixth um I, I remember us having a handwriting class and I was looking over at other people's, like all of the other girls' handwriting was really pretty and mine looked so hideous. And um, last time I went to see my family, we were talking about handwriting um, and, you know, I was like, oh, I can show you the cursive alphabet to like, I think my nephew or something because they don't teach that in school anymore. Um, but everybody's like, you know, that's, that's not how you do that letter. That's not how you do that letter. So I had like made up letters, like how I do certain letters. Um, and a lot of people have told me, even with all the practicing that I've done, that it's hard to read my handwritten letters um, that are like half cursive, half print. Um, I can read it. I'm like, what's what's so hard to read? I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> but that's because I know what the letters are, I guess. Um, but yeah, I... I missed a lot of things I was supposed to learn in the process of trying to like fit in with other people. Like, for example, in sixth grade, when I was, um, 
I wanted to play the flute or do the drums because that sounded cool, but they said my mouth shape was not right. And only the, there was no spots for drummers. It's like they had these boys that were doing the drums and that was that. And so I was like, they were like, here you go. Here's your clarinet. And I'm like, "Mm." and so I distinctly remember all the tactile, like all of the sensory stuff dealing with, dealing with that flute, even from that, uh, the clarinet. But, um, I remember, um, having a really hard time reading the sheet music and concentrating over the other kids playing their instruments. Um, and then even though I love music, uh, but being in a classroom setting was not for me. I can definitely learn one-on-one. I, I excel even, um, it's great. I, I can, I can absorb more than, than other, a lot of people around me, um, that way. But, um, I just remember we did like a Christmas, I, I want to say recital, but it was more like we walked around the school playing our instruments and we were playing Christmas music. And I just remember walking with the class and pretending to play my clarinet. Yeah. I wanted drums to get off the energy. And I remember, I don't know, have y'all ever had the experience of like the locker room? Like when you first start developing and you're just like, you're not really a kid anymore, but you're still a kid. You're in that weird phase. And you know, and I've been wondering about not, I wonder about dyslexia, but then I recently heard of this, I wrote it down somewhere. Dysgraphia, inability to write coherently, but it can deal with how you spell or how your letters look. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying before that all of a sudden. Um, oh, the gym, like we had a chain in the locker room, right? Everybody just changed at their lockers. And, and, um, you know, when I got older, I realized, you know, I like, I like girls. So maybe that's why I was uncomfortable changing in front of people. Like when I got into high school, I thought maybe that's why, but really the whole undressing in front of people, like, it's always been weird. Like, even if I'm in a relationship, it's like, I don't want you to walk in on me changing unless I specifically am, like, knowing that's going to happen. I don't want, like, unexpected, like, being perceived, (laughs) you know, like, just, just, no. Um, But, like, I had a really hard time with that um, in the locker room. So I would just go to the bathroom and change. Um, And then it got to a point where, like, I couldn't stand changing. I would get in trouble for not changing into my gym uniform. Like, I would literally be failing gym just because I wouldn't change. Like, I didn't like the way it felt. I didn't like my legs being exposed. I felt very insecure. I felt very, like you know, like my legs having to touch that dirty gym floor, all of it, all of it was horrible. And they didn't give us enough time to shower. And then they would make us sweaty. And then I would have like all of these like issues going on and I hated it. And so I was just like, no. Um, and like, I remember being able to negotiate at some point because they wanted me to graduate that, um, they would just let me take a health class instead of, um, PE. It's not that I didn't want to work out. It's just that I actually like working out. I I just don't want to do it in that setting with those people under, under those circumstances with, you know, out who wants to go to gym, like second period, get stinky and then like gross, and then have to go the rest of your day feeling dirty. 
Like, I guess people do that, but I'm not, I'm not the one. My ring light randomly wants to, I think I have the wrong adapter connected to it. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so I feel, I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel more prepared to answer these questions that might come up about my childhood. And so I'm feeling a little less stressed about it. But I think I'm going to wear whatever the F I want. In fact, I'm considering wearing this. I'm up north in the U.S. I don't know where y'all are, but I'm pretty close to Canada. And um, it's still cold. In fact, just a week ago, it was still snowing. Um, but anyway, I, I will show you. If you haven't seen this already, my... My mom got me this um, oversized hoodie. Um, and I just thought it was so, ah, so cute. But it's so me because, like, I use vibrant colors and cute, cute characters and stuff. But also, like, I like, see, it's a double headed like also kind of creepy um, aesthetic to it <laughs> I dress like a child I know um, and then I'm like should I bring my fanny pack or my my purse that I I don't know if I ever showed y'all this. I unsuccessfully, I have a website actually that I've had for a while and I have all kinds of like, of my products that are like print on demand stuff um, that I spent countless hours, days and weeks um, designing these items that only a few people ever purchased because I didn't ever do the advertising because I'm not really good at that. But like I would order samples sometimes of my stuff. Here's like um, Moringer, who, she, she's a, uh, from my Celtic Goddess series paintings. Um, and here's the purse. You know, it comes with these handles and this strap and it's actually really good quality. I was surprised I, I'm able to like have like a zipper pocket here and then two pockets here and it's you know sturdy because I'm the kind of person I'll put everything in there so much stuff like even like I have a snacks in there I got a, a Dr. Pepper can in there I got like I'm full to the max and this stuff is not messed up peeled ripped or anything and I was really surprised the only thing I have on here is I got paint on here oops my fault I have these um paintings um so yeah there's that it's um um my website is um artboxforcutie.art same as my instagram artboxforcutie if you've ever heard the band death cab for cutie it, it's kind of like, I kind of took it from that. Um, so what I started to do, because I need to go travel across the United States on an epic journey to save my things from my five by 10 storage unit that I had not seen in four years um and and it's a long dramatic uh traumatizing triggering story that i'm not going to talk about right now of how those things ended up in there but i have childhood stuff i have you know jewelries and paintings and stuffies and um doll stuff and a lot of art supplies um kind of stuff in there you know 
I don't, there's stuff in there. I don't even remember what all is in it. So I'm just really wanting to do that. But like, it's like airline tickets are really expensive right now. And I'm all the way up here and I got to go all the way down there, you know, to Texas. Uh, um, but got to do it. But I've been trying to make room in here because the attic is my studio. Um, and there's two parts. Y'all are only seeing this half. And then there's this uh, little half wall here. And there's it like basically is double this. So it's like the same on that side. Um, but so I try, I'm trying to build shelves and I'm going to probably do those clear, like tiered, like step, uh, shelves that go like that, you know, so I can like put my dolls like tiered on some shelves up here and that'll make room. So it doesn't take away from like the other art supplies and stuff that are in here. Um, but yeah, I've been doing stuff like that. Um, I start projects and then I don't finish them. But if I'm really in the zone, um, I will be doing it for 12 hours straight. Um, but then if I get sidetracked, uh, if I stop, like I got to go to the bathroom or I have to eat or do something, it's hard for me to get back into it. Um, and I think that is like the autism versus the ADHD is what's going on there. Oh, thank you. Got the girls club going on in here right now. Do I have anyone who can help me out? Help me out with what? Sarah. Since I'm using OBS Studio, I wonder if there's like a delay in when you type versus when I can see the chat. I'm still not like anywhere near uh, with getting my things. Oh, yeah, I do. Um, but still, like, I still have to go there, you know, and get it. It's going to cost a lot more to hire someone to bring it here than it will to just go there and get it, um, unfortunately. I'm probably going to have to let more things go. And I hate that because I just have a lot of trauma around people throwing my things away. Um, so, or losing things because of search, just, you know, just stuff. But yeah, do y'all want to see the dolls that I just recently got? Do you like dolls? I don't know if you like dolls. Um, hugs back. Okay, cool. Isabella said yes. All right, so. First, I will just bring these down to show you, even though these aren't my new ones. Okay, I'm just going to bring some of them over here that are already unboxed. Under this table, like in the table actually, um, I left my expensive ball jointed dolls in there. They're not ready to be displayed. I don't want to have them out where they'll get injured. so. <clears throat> All right. Okay. 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 
So this is one of my ball joint dolls and I had, I'm very frustrated. She's really cool. I don't know what happened to your arm. Um, she needs to be cleaned up. But the thing is, you see how her, um, she, she even has like finger joints. The problem with her is, is she, um, she was strung so tight. Um, and I never learned how to string and I'm afraid to like restring her and then not be able to like put her back together. So you see how she, she shouldn't be like doing that. Okay. But, um, like she has a wig, you can take their magnet heads off and you can change their eyeballs out. I don't know if y'all have ever seen dolls like this, but, um, you can do custom face up. Like I'm, I'm obsessed and yes they are and anatomically correct dolls um yes all of the things um but she's really cool and she's she's really tall and kind of amazing um that's her someday i will get someone who knows what they're doing to like do that for me i really don't need all of these layers on um, so on a, on like, I think it was like my fidget video. Um, I did show these, they're called Fidgy friends and I only have two. I think of the four that they have her little hat came off, but they're like, um, I guess I dropped her little hat on the floor, but it's a little squishy thing that has like mushrooms on it, but her skirt, it comes off. But her skirt is like, you know, one of those squishy things, which is cool. And then um, her wings have like these little... I'm actually glad that there's girls on here because last time I showed um, these, um, I had one viewer. Because, you know, I'm new to streaming, and but it was a guy. And I'm like, I don't know that he really cares, but I, I just thought they were cool. Like, if you you know, like to fidget with stuff. They have really cool joints and everything. Um, posable, just, you know, their face sculpts are all the same, but they're still fun. You know, it's still like different than any other doll I've ever seen. She's got like this little barrette and then she's got like the poppet wings. Like, come on, that's freaking cool. And then her skirt, dude. This is my favorite part of her. Her skirt. Like, wow, right? Like, that is so cool. I love it. Uh-oh, we have a little... Go back in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh yeah, I, I follow a lot of people. Um, I, I, the problem with following, I'll spend too much time. If I want to learn something, I have to learn everything about it. And then it's like, I have to become the pro at restringing before I even will start. And so it's like, is it worth that amount of research and time? Be how often am I going to apply it? That's what I have learned with myself is like, I need to be able to use it a lot or I need to like, let someone else do it. Because if I'm not enjoying it and I'm not um, able to use it a lot, I'm just going to forget the information because more information is going to come. Then it's, it's really like time consuming for me. Um, I never had any of these dolls, but um, someone recently gifted this to me, um, and I think it's like the Ever After dolls, um, and they gave it to me to like res like um, turn it into another doll. I do that, you know, like I'm working on um, on a doll for one of my kids, older kid, but uh, making it look like them. Um, who likes Monster High dolls? Because that's basically the main, well, I have 
I'm going to show y'all Shadow High and Monster High. So. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, um, they, like, the, just collecting dolls, like, makes me happy. So, um, the fact that, um, I was taken to get dolls and they were on sale and I, I was able to get them. I was like, yay. Um, so, but here's some that I already had. Um, and these are like the newer ones. So like they have a different sculpt than the first generation, obviously. So I have, um, these are the monster high. We have Frankie and, um, here we have, um, Draculaura. And I love that they all have different body shapes. Like the first ones didn't really have like how she has thicker legs and she's shorter like than Frankie, for example, like, you know, like I like the older ones too. Like I especially like the older Frankie face, but I really like that they did something different here, you know? Um, and this is a Gula. She's like, all about brains and I love just how all their little like things that came with them like all like go along like she has a backpack that has a texture of brains and then she's got like this brain thing here and here and then like the texture on her jacket is like brains it's just like all those little details like even the bottom of the shoes are like textured like brains like little details like that make me so happy um, and then I don't know if y'all know this, but, um, Monster High has a doll that is autistic. So Twyla, um, she is, um, an autistic character and I love her. Like, look at her mermaid hair. And I know like her hair got kind of funky back here. I need to fix that, but she's so pretty. Like at the colors, like, obviously I like the colors, but she's so pretty um and i think it's interesting with twyla that um her interests are like um like you know astronomy type stuff you know like mystical things yeah and actually there's a cartoon of, of the as well um now i watch ex candidus candidus she has hundreds of dolls. Like she's a whole room full of shelves with tiers of dolls. And I don't know how she can afford all these dolls, but um, it's crazy. But she showed me like a doll like this would be around 30 bucks, right? She has one that was like over a hundred dollars of her. But if you saw the video with all the special detailing and everything oh my god it was amazing so all right now um i'm gonna show you my shadow high but these two um were gifted to me oh my gosh they i mean i would just go i kept going to target i kept going and going and going and i would just go on the aisle and i would stare at them because i'm like i can't spend my money on this um the little that i have right now um back then um now i'm just like completely broke um but yeah look how gorgeous she is like wow but it's not like all the detail here, like all this, um, beading and details, um, and just like, look at the shoes and yeah, that's fabric with glitter and just like, she is so cool. Like I, I guess I have like a visual stem, so I don't have to actually play with the dolls. It's just like, I like to, when I, I want to feel their hair and I just want to be like, like basically admiring them is like a stem for me. I'm just like, Nah, you know, 
I don't know her name. Like, I still need to learn all their names, and I don't have the box to this one anymore. But my God, like, and they are very articulate. Like, look at, like, how their wrists are, you know, but like, even look at their tiny nails and everything. It's just so crazy. Like, um, I didn't have dolls like that when I was a kid, you know? And then here is another one. I don't know where her earrings are, but she is so freaking cool, guys. Look at her. And this feels like some kind of pleather um, pants. And then the shoes also have some interesting texture to them. And then, like, this. And this is separate. This is, like, I still have some of the rubber bands on here. Like, um, this is separate. Like, it comes off. And then this is a shirt underneath it. And then just like look they have like the eyelashes and then the eyes are like so cool and then her eyebrows like can you see the glitter she's so cool i need to find out what her name what the the names are on both of these dolls i wonder if it says no it doesn't okay so those dolls are like $35, $40. Um, $45. It depends on the doll. Um, you know, like how Barbie can be like basic. Barbie is like really cheap. And then like if she comes with any accessories or a special outfit, then she's like a lot more. But like I would say about $30, $40 for one of those dolls. And then like for the Monster High, they're usually like $25, $30. <sighs> Yeah, I have seen, uh, Sarah, I have seen, um, yeah, she is a white queen. I have seen, um, Blythe dolls, but not in person. Um, and I've wondered, I'm going to eat an M&M, um, if I would like that. Here's the crazy thing. And here's the inspiration for my hair that I want to do next. Her name is Barry Skies. And she was $40. Except I only paid $7 at Walmart. I don't know why, but she was on clearance. Like they were trying to get rid of her. And yes, I just got her, so I haven't taken her out of the package yet. But like, oh my god. Um, is that better? If I turn the screen down, the brightness, does that help y'all? Her skirt has little CDs in it. Like, I think you can remove them. But she is so beautiful. Oh my god. I'm sorry, y'all probably can't really see her that well. But can you imagine for $7? That's crazy. She comes with... um some kind of shades that I don't particularly like. A little fake laptop, um, a cell phone, and I think that's supposed to be an iPad. But her belt, it looks like some kind of cables. And so there's the rainbow high dolls and then there's the shadow high. And so she has like some kind of cool earrings in there. I can't really tell exactly. They're green and some kind of metallic. Her eyebrows are amazing. She has like even painted little like, um, what you know, like the little hairs right here that are curled and, and styled. And her hair color is like, uh, I love it. I'm in love. 
Her name is Barry Skies. And then I got another one also for seven dollars. Um now her hair, her hair looks like it's like that nylon soft hair, right? This doll has different kind of hair. Um, this is Pinky James. Her hair, it's like, I don't know if you can tell, but like, look at that. Look how cool that is and how long it is. Um, I don't love her outfit, but um, she's got little like headphones and I do like her sunglasses. But she's so pretty. I haven't opened her yet. Um, I'm actually really want her, but she's still forty dollars. So, I, oh my god! And there's some in there that are like really expensive, like beautiful dolls that they make. Um, I started liking them because their faces are so big that if I want to like um, reface up them, um, like customize them, these have articulation and they have a huge face and also they have eyes so some people like cut open the heads and reattach them and some people you can boil or not boil but put their head in hot water and pop their eyes out and like exchange eyes between dolls um I wouldn't do that without like researching it first but it's a thing so those dolls were $7, guys. That's how much the outfit cost. This was a $7 outfit for one of them. I just love it. I always want it to be like a dancer. So cool. So here's the little tiara and the beautiful dress that sparkles. Uh, yeah, I haven't opened any of this yet, so. All right, moving along. This one, um, I think it was 30, it was either $24.95 or $29.95, but it was on sale for nine. Liter I know it looks like dreadlocks with some kind of yarn or like little braids. It's really tiny and intricate. Okay, she's so amazing. I love her so much. Um, Torlai, I got her for $9. And she comes with like, she's a cat. Um, she's like a wear cat. She comes with an extra shirt, a can of tuna, um, cat milk. Uh, she has like um, a microphone and a stand and a little backpack and if it's like the other ones that I have they do like you can squish it and it opens for you to put the stuff in there and it has like a little dangly thing on her backpack which is cool and they all come with their little pet um, and she's just so pretty and I love how the Monster High dolls, they all have their own face sculpt. And then I just, I just love the little like nose thing right here. Just... When I unpackage these, maybe I'll like do a, a video just showing these. And then this one, um, I think they were $24.95 because on, on walmart.com, like in the store, she was regular price, the Claudine that I'm about to, sh about to show you, but they price matched their own price to online, which, so she was $12. All um, yeah. So, Ah, she's got like kind of tinted purple hair, but she is so beautiful and I just love all this purple um, And here's her little animal And she's got socks and a really cool purse with a dangly on it. So she doesn't have a backpack She has a purse all the other ones have purses um, She's got her little cell phone Her glasses are super cool. They're gold and a matching comb 
I'm not really sure what the moon is supposed to be. I think it's a cookie. And then she has howl puff, howl puffs. I think this is the, um, I'm not sure what that is. It might be like a little jacket or something, but just like in the package, it kind of just looks like some weird fur thing. I, I'm going to have to open it to figure out what that is, but yeah. So that's kind of like what helps me. That's like a, a special interest. <laughs> so makes me happy. Um, her top is cute. Reminds me of the stuff, um, the closet historian is making recently. The closet historian. Is that a TV show? I like it. Very different and cool. Um, yeah, I really love all of these. I'm, but <clears throat> yeah, so I'm making them shelves and I'm going to display them. Oh, and I forgot they have, um, so you know how they have the regular, um, they have the junior ones too, of the Shadow High, or I guess it's Shadow Junior High or something, but yeah, I just love these colors and stuff. I, I don't really think that this dress is appropriate on her, like, I just feel like it's kind of weird, like, i rather see something more junior high on her, I guess. Is that just me? Am I weird for that? I just feel like this is a very like, um, t go out with, you know, on a, go out to a very rich event, like on a date or some kind of thing, adulty dress on this little girl. It just feels really too much that's me I think it's a YouTube channel what are you talking about oh the closet historian um and then a couple of other weird things that I did for myself recently like I want to collect again I, I only ever had one, but you know, the eighties, like care bears, they were like the plastic ones, but they like could turn their head and move their arms and legs. And they were like that of the care bears. And I only had grumpy bear. Who's like my favorite, but I don't have any of them. So, um, and they're like not cheap to, to get them. Um, I don't really care for the reproduction ones that, well, I wouldn't care if it was a reproduction if it looked like the original 80 ones, but I don't really like the newer look to, like the newer cartoon look. They, I'll show you what I mean. Um, if you know what the Care Bears look like, and then this, these are like the newer ones, and I'm just kind of like, happening like when you watch the actual cartoon of it it's like why why are you drawn like that i can't handle it but i mean i i i kind of considered um opening him up like putting a zipper taking some of the stuffing and like uh making it into like a backpack purse but it's kind of small i kind of want to get a jumbo one is that, is that an autistic thing of a 45 year old wanting a giant, um, Care Bear backpack purse? <sighs> is it? I don't know. Am I just artistic or am I autistic or artistic? I, I don't know if that's a word. I mean, it's not a word, but I don't know how to say the thing I'm trying to say. But so because I couldn't get any Care Bears, I found this poster and I went to um online and it, it's literally like 14 pages or something I went to rast rasturbator.net 
and created this poster. So it's like literally I had to like cut two edges off of each thing so that I could make this poster up here because you know my ceiling is like weird right guys so it's like it's just right there to the left of me when I'm sitting by y'all and I'm like oh look at all the Care Bears throughout the years drool 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 <laughs> I think artistic should be the criteria only you're an autist. You know, I, um, I almost used that as like a handle on YouTube, but here's like my little area of like, um, Hayao Miyazaki. So I got like my little no faced uh, pencil thing and, um, I made this like little thing showing like when I was teaching showing kids like design and some little paintings I did. Yes, I, I know I'm weird. I have a doll skeleton, uh, little posters, a little watercolor I did um, that it's kind of messy in here. Anyway, um, well, I'm going to show you all this. But first I have to change the color so that, yeah, cause I want y'all, can y'all see the glow? So this is my labyrinth area. Um, let me turn it to white. So here's my um, tapestry I have. Um, my little, my little Ello pillow guy. Um, I'm still working on this area, but the, these are some little paintings. Cause I, um, the house I was in before I moved here, I had a room that, um, was like the guest room and I did the whole guest room labyrinth themed. So I have a bunch of like labyrinth -y stuff. Um, and then here's my Celtic goddess series over here waiting to be in their homes and yes they all glow as well um but yeah i'm still working on this area it's like all my oil paint stuff that i haven't used yet <laughs> but i did like make i did kind of set it up but you know it's all kind of crazy um sorry if i'm making you nauseous i am going to learn I've done a lot of studying. I'm collecting boxes for a reason. I'm not in completely insane. I'm going to make my own dollhouse. Apparently, you can make sturdy um, walls and stuff using cardboard. Like, you glue the cardboard pieces together and, um, like, double them and stuff. But, yeah, I have, like, a million things going at all times like I'm making I'm making clothes I'm making jewelry I have like a whole like I started making I started laughing when when Jen um I don't know if were y'all in um uh neurodivergence video earlier um she says do y'all know what the autism creature is and I started like laughing in my head because here's like little clay um, pieces I was working on just messing around <laughs> but uh yeah I have that um and then you know all the art that I've been it's just kind of crazy um it's like I don't like doing I don't want to do work or anything like I, I don't want to do anything unless it's art related you know and even then it's like to a theme that I like it's like I don't I guess the way I say that, it sounds really selfish, but it's like, it's almost like I'm just not even capable of doing it unless I'm interested. Like, I'm physically incapable of doing it. Where did I put it? Is it downstairs? Well, here's the sketch of it anyway. Here's the original sketch 
but I do, I did print out some stickers and I'm also making shirts and I have like the transparency so that I can do sun prints on shirts, but I don't know if you can see that. Ride or die autism inclusion. So there's my little, uh, <sighs> I just thought that would look cute on a shirt. Am I, am I a dork for that? It's like, I don't even ride a motorcycle. I just thought it was cool. Hey, yes, how are you doing? So, yeah. Nyeh. That's kind of my thing. Do -do -do -do. Um, yeah, it's kind of a hot mess in here. Still, like, I'm still moving stuff around and stuff, but... And I'm trying to figure out, like, what's the next big, like, series I'm going to be doing. Like, I kind of feel like I still don't know. I don't know what's holding me back. I have all the materials to, you know, make the shirts. And yet I'm still, like, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Oh my God, you know what I did the other day? I learned how to print using an inkjet printer onto fabric. What did I print on there, you ask? Well, Rainbow Bright, of course. And then I put it on a pair of ugly shorts and I considered wearing said ugly shorts with that really weird faded looking patch to my evaluation. Possibly with some really crazy like under pants, under the shorts, like, I don't know. Something like this. Like, I feel, it, it's, it's just weird because like when I, used to go out it's like okay what matches what what makes sense for the thing that i'm doing and it's like but if you do that for an evaluation isn't that masking i'm kind of confused about the rules on this you know uh And wear them. I don't know. It's just like I'll probably definitely be wearing my my uh my fun hoodie over here. Um I think I look fun no matter what I wear. I mean, look at my hair and my face. Eh. You know, and I'm probably going to be like this I imagine them calling my name and I'm in the like waiting room and I'm like, I don't even hear them. And I'm going to, obviously I'm going to be wearing my head headphones and I'll probably be like, it's a good thing. Okay. So I'm growing my bangs out and I like cut my own hair today. I think, I think I did pretty good. So now I'm at the phase where I can be like that to get the light out of my eyes. Because I, because I wear glasses, it doesn't get in my eyes. It's a little bit longer now, so it's not like, there, it will, I'm going to have a love-hate relationship with it. It's going to be like touching me and irritating me, and then I'm going to be like, okay, but I need it. Uh, yeah. Thank you for telling me that I was so brave. Like, y'all really, really helped me a lot, so thank you. Um, yeah. I feel like I made a mess of my desk with all these dolls, and I need to move them now. Especially since I don't want to get any, like paint on them on accident or anything that would be heartbreaking I'll just put them up later
so yes 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 so um don't know what else to say right now i think that's all i have for now unless there's a topic you have in mind i do it is like 8 30 and i should probably eat today I had nine M&M's and uh, Dr. Pepper, half of a Dr. Pepper, Diet Dr. Pepper, half of a chai tea, lukewarm from this morning. Um, I have a really hard time telling what time it is. Um, that video was so brave and important. Malmavist help with that. Mal, Malmavist. Hmm. I feel like I'm so lost what y'all are talking about. Okay, okay, I needed to go way back. I'm so sorry. I'm neglecting the chat. You can see some of your own creative visions in me. Labyrinth really is the best movie. I love nostalgia. I think, like, can nostalgia... Can nostalgia be a special interest? Like, I just have, like... I want to collect all of the Care Bears and the Rainbow Brights. And, like, can that be a special interest? Is just to want to collect all your childhood toys for comfort? Like, is that a thing? Yeah, ADHD as well. I love this live. It's so much fun. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. Put what on a shirt? Your room had slanted walls. That's crazy. Allowing myself to enjoy things my have not been allowed as a child or reliving your childhood authentically is totally an autistic thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Same, I'm physically incapable unless I want to do it and that explains my half finished projects. Yeah, but then you know what's crazy is sometimes years can go by or months and um, a painting that I never finished or just like got stuck on, if I just leave it to where I can see it, I, um, all of a sudden something amazing happens. Um, yeah, I made a dress out of, uh, like really big um like men's dickies shirt it was like a 3x and i turned it into a dress like i just and i don't use a pattern i just like i don't know what i'm doing it's kind of crazy and that's okay because all that other stuff like i feel like i have to do it my way first and then have see what the problem is myself and then go seek out the solutions and then I can like start absorbing it but if I like am just thrown like there's this whole world of sewing that you have to learn and all these things and then I'm like ah I'm on fire make it stop I'm never trying that because that is making my brain cross um And be as raw as possible. Wear what I want. I will wear what I want. Uh, 
Oh, Mal Mal Malquivist with designing. Hmm. I'm still trying to catch up with y'all. Just thinking about the shirts with the prints. Oh, okay. Hello Kitty. I love Hello Kitty. I love all Sanrio surprise stuff. My melody. I had a Karo Karo Karopi um, backpack purse back when backpack purses were like new um, and somebody stole it. I like literally had it for like a year and someone stole it and I can't believe and I'm never going to get over it. I was like 19. I'm like never going to get over it guys. 80s music and movies is where it's at. Um... And early 90s, too. Um, like, okay, people didn't know this, but I was in high school. I was, like, even a senior in high school, and I was watching Rugrats, okay? I was like, the Rugrats are so cool. I mean, it's not like I told anybody I was watching it. I just did, you know? I just did. <laughs> I got away with wearing whatever I wanted and doing weird stuff with my clothes, I think, because people saw me as an artistic -y person. And if you hang out with, like, the headbangers and the grunge kids and the, you know, the oddballs and the kids that do extracurricular stuff um, in the cowl fields and stuff like that, then, you know, you're a little bit more accepted. But I still, like... A lot of those kids had very troubled lives, and I think a lot of those kids were neurodivergent themselves. Um, yeah. Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Courtney Love, who is also autistic. Um, all of that. I was weird, guys. I was really weird. Like, I was just fascinated with information. Like, on one, I had, like, these double doors that, like, my closet interconnected. But there's, like, another little wall here. And I just, like, on my walls, I would, like, if I couldn't afford a poster or something, I would just, like, cut it out of magazines. And I would, like, make my own, like, collages of stuff on my walls. <clears throat> so, I had, like, on one door, it was, like, all the Pearl Jam the guys from Pearl Jam, right? And I had Nirvana and I had um, Nine Inch Nails and I had uh, Marilyn Manson and I had like a whole collage of Courtney Love and Drew Barrymore because I shipped them. Like, I ship you. Um, and then like other weird things interested me. Like, what makes people want to be criminals? Like, I didn't understand. Like, so I got really obsessed um, for a while and the the Manson family and um I literally had like a whole wall of like clippings and stuff of them so if he had went in my room he'd be like is this a cult area but it was really just me like being fascinated that this guy like and he didn't even do it he convinced other people to like do these horrible things and I was just like how do you control somebody like that? That's crazy. Like, it was interesting to me. Like, I really wanted to know. Like, I couldn't even control someone to be my friend. How did he control someone to do that? You know? My first, like, real friend that I had was in sixth grade and we're still friends. Like, we're the kind of people we can go, like, years without talking and then all of a sudden, blah, 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 you know? But, um, she dressed kind of, like, off or whatever. But the thing about her, she had this necklace on and she had this clear, like, it was a freaking radio, but it was a ball and a clear ball with like, you know, the 80s colors or whatever, like mechanics inside of it. But it was a freaking radio necklace. And I'm like, that is so interesting. And you're interesting. And she is. She's a music teacher now. 
And of course her studio is like all glow in the dark stuff. But yeah, um, very interesting person. And we had, uh, you know, in high school group therapy together with the school psychologist. So, I mean, we've been friends. Uh, I did attract a certain type of person around me. Um, when, but before that, when I was younger, I got picked on all the time. I got picked on until I learned that if I made my weirdness art, like that was my persona, then it was okay to be weird. But it only went so far. Because I got a master's degree and yet I still can't hold a job as a teacher because I'm too weird, you know, like, and it's too stressful. It's overstimulating. It's too much. I can't deal with all of the children's behaviors and all of the things that to keep up with and the uh, hypocrisy of the politics of the school and all that. So I can't deal with it. It's too much. I can teach an art class to like a small group of people that have no expectations and are fine with me being autistic. So yeah, but originally I am, um, art was not my first love actually. I was going to be a singer and a writer, and I actually have been a singer, and I actually have been a writer. My next goal after I get evaluated is I'm going to write a freaking book. I'm just going to do it. Why? Because I can. I can and I am. And who cares if anyone likes it? I'm just going to do it to say I finished one finally because I've written so many books that I never finished writing because probably I need to write a book that's about this so that I can feel authentic. Thanks. And the crowd goes wild. Yeah, I hate teaching. Like, I can do one-on-one, -on -one, but it's like gets to a point where I feel like I'm literally just entertaining people. Like, um, I write poetry and, um, I've written some short stories, um, and, um, some, like, I guess fantasy novel stuff, but I get so, like, it would take me years to write something. It got to a point to where um, this one book I was working on turned into, like, I have all these ideas to make it a stop motion. And I made all of these paper cutout puppets um, because I wanted to do them, like, in actual, like, 3D puppets. But um, I'm a one-man show over here, and doing stop motion is very time-consuming and... Uh, I moved around a lot. You know, I, my whole life, I've moved around a lot and I'm finally in my forever home. And so I'm finally able to relax and like, um, be taken care of. Um, at least my basic needs are taken care of, um, without me having to, um, I, I did lose some freedoms, you know, but I am able to relax and um, process for once in my life, you know. Hey, Bree. You have an idea for a fantasy novel based on Europe in the year 350 AD, but progress is slow, too. Yeah. We're like, oh, Nano Rimo, huh? More like Nano Rai Year. Nano Rimo. Nano Rai Yi. Nano Rai Yes. 
we will create this nano rai <laughs> my cats are crying because they miss me they're not allowed up here because they will destroy things that i hold precious and dear I really hate to do this right now, but I really, like, I think I need to eat because I literally had nine M&Ms. That's, like, the only food I had today, and it's, like, almost nine o'clock, and if I go to bed too soon after I eat, I will feel bad. I have, will have stomach issues. <clears throat> Off the top of my head, um only part and part but i have songs um that i have written and are online <laughs> maybe i will share that with you next time hydrate i don't know why but the tony the tiger song keeps playing in my head and it's annoying me and you. Uh, they have a self feeder though. So, but maybe they need more water because we don't have a self, like, well, they do have one fountain, but down there, they're just picky. But anyway, um, remember there's no, I can't, and I'm learning how to go out there, beautiful people and make art. Bye.